information and we're going to respond. In and, addition uh, to that, when we when we do our walkabouts, when we go and we've all done this and go on to our communities and knocking on doors, this is one of the main topics that we bring up and we talk to our community member about this system and we ask them, as you heard some during the uh, presentation by Captain Charlo, why didn't you call? They go, well, we hear gun gunfire every single night and and we're either afraid because we're being terrorized in our neighborhood, so we're not going to call because we just don't want to get involved and give our name, mm -hmm. or we uh, we thought somebody else would call it in, or it's just so routine mm -hmm. that you know we we just don't call it in. Um, and when we tell them about this system, in every case when we have gone door to door and we've knocked on hundreds of doors, uh, community has said great system. They feel safer and they're glad it's there. Law enforcement need to put more time, effort, and resources into building public trust and legitimacy in the community. Community members not reporting crimes has more to do with the strain between the community and law enforcement than it does being afraid of perpetrators. Black make up 4% of the population in San Diego County, but 22% in the areas they have installed the shot spotters. Even when you narrow it down to violent crimes, um, when you look at the SDPD divisions below Interstate 8, the Southeastern Division has had the second lowest violent crime rate compared to the other police divisions below Maxwell, Interstate Council, 8. Uh, resident, I'm a little disturbed by when the police officers say who they talk to. Because you work in the 4th Council District doesn't make you a citizen of the 4th Council District. You come make money in the 4th Council District. So the people that live there, play there, work there, they should have just a little bit more say than somebody that comes to the community, makes their money, and go live somewhere else. I talked to some kids that, um, w and I gave them the statistics, I gave them the money. And they said, "Miss Maxwell, we would love for the police, given the world that we're living in right now, if they use that money that's forfeiture money, that 90% that's coming from the DA, the 10% of the um, seized assets, and they created some programs where we would shoot baskets and not shoot guns. We would do some other, we would do some Toastmasters. We would do some other strategies and other instances where they can utilize this money. They have militarized my they community. They want to continue to keep my community under siege, 4th Council District. So we went back to 2013, and yes, we had some issues, but we've done a lot of work in community policing. Residents of the 4th Council District call within two minutes this of a shot. This had no community buy-in before it was implemented and has had extremely little to expand. This presentation is misrepresenting shot spotters. Of the seven victims, at least four or five were property damage, and one to three were injury victims, of which 911 was called, and the officers would have located them because residents were with the victims. At least one uh, pinpointed the actual location of one person. Shot spotter has been known in at least three other areas to have picked up voices Contra Costa, Oakland, and New York, of which there is documentation of those voices and what they were saying. They now currently appear to have full authority to edit any other sounds out of the recordings as well, so you can only hear the shots. The data is using percentages to look better because currently with 131 activations, there is not enough proof that shot spotters has decreased shootings at all, and it should not shot be presented as such. Shot spotters is getting rich off of crime data, and in San Diego, that is over $1.4 million over six years, including the implementation year. SDPD with this equipment is now being included in this strategic gentrification of Southeast community. If they cannot weed them out, they will arrest them out. Still today, I have not been provided the arrest made, not linked to shootings, but caught up while responding to shot Good spotters. Afternoon, Thank um, you. Council members. My name is Monica Montgomery, candidate for uh, District 4 City Council. Um, I agree with um, everything that has been said by the community members that I know that are affected by the shot spotters. Um, but I also just want to uh, point on a couple of things that were said during the presentation. It opened with uh, a premise that this is the way to keep uh, San Diego one of the safest, largest cities, as if District 4 is the only district that has crime. And that is inaccurate. Um, and this shows that there is a concerted effort to uh, surveil people in District 4 and it is very discriminatory because the the statistics that are in this report do not justify 
having additional surveillance in one district in the city of San Diego. I, I, I have not seen it and I have not heard it. The way to build trust with the community is to take public input before these types of things are put in a community. The way to build trust in a community is to acknowledge that the very same community that you want to put or are putting these shot spotters in is the community that on record is the one that, that uh, suffers most from racial profiling. When you want trust, you have to have accountability. There is no accountability as to the community and police relations in the Southeastern Division. There is not. And so even if this were the greatest thing in the world, which it is not, to come here and try to say that it is, is misleading. And it, it, it hurts us all because it leads us farther away from establishing that accountability and trust that we need. So I just want to bring those points out and really caution the language that we're using, not only in this presentation, but throughout this whole afternoon. Thank